All right, so I lost you guys there for a minute, but we are back on. We're on injector number two now, number two, and let's stop that. And notice here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. We know we're on two. So notice here we've got a little drop down. We've got a pretty heavy amplitude, which tells me that that panel is popping off properly. This is our fluid getting all, um, getting some velocity to it and swirling it around in there. But notice how we drop off another fluid spike, another fluid spike, another fluid spike. This leads me to believe the, the spring and panel inside this injector are weak and it's not properly fully seating when it does that. I want to see basically a clearly delineated shutoff point, not a longer. Let's see if we can find another spot where it does it. Uh, there we go. There's a there's a larger peak here. Let's zoom over there. You know, I, I, I want to see this basically shut off and go back to a waveform closer to that than this. And if we go go along, it's not terrible, but we want relatively clearly delineated shut off of all this turbulence. So while we're here, let's go to number three because you guys have nothing better to do than to watch me. So we got that set up there, that there. All right, and record. And here, so here, notice that we have clearly delineated shut off and a nice flat line between them, and yet we don't have a large amplitude. So that, that's closer to being good, not 100%, but we're pretty okay with that. Now that drop off there, right in, let's see if I can get you zoomed in on that. Come on, right about there. So we do have a, a relatively slow drop off. That leads me to believe that it's actually possibly sticking a little bit and it's not fully opening. So that might be a, you know, carboned up or crapped up tip, a little bit of debris and all in there. But the panel and the, uh, the spring appear to be operating properly, although it's not building the type of injection pressure I would think. Now we're coinciding high injection pressure and a clear nozzle with a high amplitude of fluid because the fluid's gonna come out at a high pressure at a relatively fast rate and then shut down. We're not gonna have those long drawn out spikes like uh, injector number two. But with this smaller amplitude, I believe it's having a harder time getting rid of that fluid, the uh, fuel in this case. So if you guys want an actual video that goes into all the interpretation of these waveforms and goes into high detail, let me know in the comments. We can do that. Um, still working on it, but it's, it's something that's worthwhile. Uh, this thing's got 1,866 hours on it, which if you do 40 miles per hour, it basically comes out to about 75,000 miles on this engine. Uh, I want to do the caps. I'm going to recommend the injectors. And anytime we recommend injectors, I always recommend having our injection pump on something this old and something that has been this non maintained. I always recommend having this pump tested. It's completely up to the customer, but I, I think it's cheap peace of mind. At that point, we would be in there cleaning out our governor setup and all as well. And for anybody who thinks it might be an inlet restriction, 
It is not no air bubbles here. We can actually clamp off our return line. That doesn't clear it up at all. It's not necessarily a low pressure problem within the pump and the does clear out as your idle speed gets higher. So that to me leads me to believe that low speed injection injector operation. So hope you guys enjoyed it. And like I said, let me know if you want to go in depth into this and learn as I'm learning. Have a good one.